Hello, hello everyone and welcome to another Fallout 76 video and today I'm going to show you how I lasted about 2 hours in the survival mode and managed to get a 41k experience and killed over 300 enemies. <laughs> The survival mode is out and live for a few days now and if you had the chance to try it out you probably know how challenging and unforgiving this mode can be. Now I have been testing a lot of things and playstyles and I figured out a strategy that will allow you to survive longer and do pretty much anything you want from events to roaming around, exploring, and even do your weekly challenge for the legendary reward. So in here, all you need is a lot of strategy and to play smarter than your opponent, because you know that beforehand, people will try to kill you no matter what. And if you are in the top three uh, of living longer, then off the server will be after you. And it's a matter of avoiding these situations or trying to find a server where people are actually trying to do the same as you instead of killing each other all the time. But let's move on and check what are the strategy points that you need to follow to survive longer and thrive. The first thing you need to do is log into adventure mode Yes, you heard it right. Go into adventure mode and start planning ahead. Now, choose your weapons wisely. Uh, make sure you have the right perks for your build and play style. And also make sure that you have stored everything in your aid uh, category that you don't want to lose and yeah and make sure you save some in your inventory because you'll need it food and water some uh, buffs also steam packs everything that will help you stay alive basically also make sure to check your weapons and armor if they are damaged repair it because you will probably spend a few hours in pvp mode and you want to start with the right step don't forget to organize your shortcuts as well. I am filling it up with pretty much things that I usually don't, but you need to be quick in survival and this will help you a lot. When you step into survival, you need to understand that the rules are quite different and as such, you shouldn't use the same perks as you do in adventure. So, for example, melee builds are not that powerful here, so my suggestion is to try and mix your perks uh, between guns and melee, if you are uh, using melee weapons, of course. And also, if you are playing alone in Charisma, go with Lone Wanderer, it's very important. And in Agility, if you have a decent amount of points, try to get Defense and Mobility, because you will be running a lot and attacked by mobs and people. So it's great to adapt your build to these new rules in the server and to think that you will be fighting people most likely too. So don't just go damage, damage, damage. Uh, get some defense, get some utility and that will help you survive a little better. In case you're not aware yet, in survival, people can attack your base with no penalty. They will not get a bounty for attacking what's yours. So make sure your base is not in a hot spot or, you know, in areas that people normally visit or go around. I know it's bothersome and I had to do it myself, but move it to a remote area, maybe in the mountains or in a cave, something where people will hardly uh, go or check to make sure you won't return to a broken base and then you need to be fixing uh, 
a lot of things and sometimes you run out of mats for example if they break your decontamination shower it's a hassle to repair so better safe than sorry still in the adventure server you should choose a location okay something that is not popular like the white spring or rust tag and go there okay because you want to log off here and as you know the servers are connected so when you log in the survival server you will spawn right where you logged off in the adventure server so that's a very uh, important information to know and you can use this as much as you want right now there aren't that many people playing in the survival mode servers so if you can do a few server jumps do it until you find one that is not too populated you can see it by checking the scoreboard if it has less than 10 names then it means there are less than 10 players in the server or alternatively you can check for a server where people are not pvping too much and you can check or pay attention to the pvp notifications in the top left corner of your screen so these two indicators are very strong to let you know if the server is actually safe to pve and you know do your business here whether you want the 20 percent experience or if you are trying to do your weekly challenge it's up to you what you want to do and yeah this helps a lot at least to me it has helped me a ton once you have found a server it's time to buff up as much as possible so cook your food get your gems out of your storage if you don't have enough already and don't forget to get some sleep for the 5% experience bonus and to play some music to get the stamina regeneration bonus. That's very important, don't forget it, because every time you change servers they reset and you have to do it again if you want them. Also you can use some buffs and to improve your experience gain you can stack it with bubble heads or other foods like the cranberry uh, relish or the cranberry cobbler if you don't know how to craft them then check our guide i am putting the link up there so you can check uh, everything you need to know to craft them and then we can proceed to the next step so after you are all ready it's time to start walking yes walking because you can hardly fast travel in survival mode you only have the stations and you should kind of avoid them to be honest so make sure to walk outside of your power armor because you will be a much faster and you will do less noise so if you go and cross ways with another player they will notice you miles away if you are in your power armor however if you are outside they will hardly notice you plus you can just go stealth or run away from them without them noticing you at all so keep that in mind and because you need to check your map on a regular basis to try to navigate and reach your next destination because in survival it's all about walking walking and walking as i already mentioned before i strongly advise you to get an armored piece with chameleon which basically blends you with the environment you are stealthy and if any players come by you will be much more difficult to spot of course they can still see you in their radar but it's an advantage for you and you should use it another thing that you really want to do is keep opening your map to check the scoreboard and particularly the one that always shows the longest life and check if you are in the top three if you are then you need to be very very careful because off the server is probably hunting you down if you are in a pvp active server 
if you are in the fourth fifth position then you need to monitor uh the changes if someone gets killed in the top three then you will fill up uh, the gap very soon and then people will be hunting you so make sure to be vigilant and track your performance in the scoreboard because you need to take some measures to protect yourself and avoid losing caps and aid items junk and so on if you are in a server where people are constantly killing each other and you just reach the top three then you can always kill yourself yes but you need to do it strategically so die on your own will at your own timing and do it near a location where you can retrieve your loot easily so you can do it near a station or near your home or a friend's base i usually do it near stations but not too close however people can also loot your stash but normally they are too focused in hunting their prey so they normally don't come to loot your stash but you never know so be very careful you might not have too many fast travel points anymore in survival but you can use events as a fast travel strategy so you can travel to them by joining the event but you don't have to actually take part of each and single event you teleport to you can simply come by and then go your way i do this all the time of course it does take caps but if you take the travel urgent perk things will be a little bit more accessible plus you can escape enemies and you know do things much faster if you use this tip to move around this strategy point is very important, but only if you are in a highly populated server where people are highly aggressive. So if this happens, avoid stations and popular farming spots at any cost. So White Spring, West Tech and events like Reunion Fever and even a Monster Mash or a Violent Night, they are events that normally people go to because legendaries drop there, more than one usually. So avoid these events and locations, otherwise you will get killed on spot. When you join a survival server, you never know what you will find in terms of people's behavior. I have found everything so far and my advice here is don't trust anyone so if someone is just farming or doing events you can try to invite them to your team but if they don't speak up if they don't seem to interact with you in any way be very wary because this can happen to you the event finished, the guy simply left the team and killed me with no notice. It's not very pleasant, but it's part of the game and you should be prepared. On the other hand, I also found nice people who wanted to tag along and do events with me, farm spots, travel around and so on. So it's up to you to decide if you want to be a lone survivor or if you want to risk parting and ending up getting killed now let's talk a little bit about the weekly challenge if you want to do this my first advice to you is a server jump because most people or most of them are trying to do this as well which means they are going to the same farming spots that you are visiting most likely so you will often find your farming spots to be empty or you won't find any legendaries where you normally find them and this means you need to server jump a lot now keep in mind that servers are a bit limited right now because not too many people are playing this mode so that might be a restriction but nonetheless you should try it Again, if you are in a somewhat peaceful server, then you should try to find 
legendaries and get your challenge done as soon as possible. But not every legendary will fit this challenge. I know that they don't say which type of legendary, but I have tested it and legendary enemies with no stars will not help you progress the challenge. So you need to find legendaries that have at least one star for it to count. It's quite annoying and it makes things even more difficult, but it is how it is and you should know this before you go around at Botaga hunting legendary robots and then you check your progress and it didn't really update. It's not a bug. It's just, well, they didn't specify that the legendaries have to be at least one star. Well, now you know. And again, if your server is peaceful, you can get workshops for several reasons. The first one is you will get more free fast travel points. And the second one, you will get regular events to defend it, which gives you experience, yay, and rewards. So that's great. And I think it's totally worth it. But again, it needs to be a peaceful server or people will come, contest, take it from you. Also, you cannot server jump or you will lose your workshop and all the progress. And that's not a nice thing, is it now? The next strategy point is about fooling your enemies. So when you are carrying a decent amount of valuable aid items, I suggest you to also carry useless ones like spoiled meat, dirty water, inert flux and stuff that you really don't want like for example fruits and flowers and i don't know what really like things that you don't need or use because then when you drop useful items you will also drop the useless ones and then things balance out more and you end up losing less items that you actually need and want to keep Finally, my last tip to you to survive longer is to simply log out when you are in trouble and you are not sure what to do. So if, if you know an enemy is around you, if you think it's a group, if you are not sure where to teleport while you are part of the top three, just log out. Nothing is going to happen and you will have a little bit more time to think and you might as well join a new server after you relog. So it's a win-win situation and you ensure to keep your stats and avoid certain deaths in most cases. As you probably saw at the start, I managed to live almost two hours straight and I did a lot of events. I did seven events. I gathered a total of 41k experience points. It's almost three full levels. And I also killed over 300 enemies. But then my game freeze for some reason. And when I logged in a new server, it spawned me at vault 76 and while i was checking my map a surprise happened so this guy i don't know if he's camping vault 76 he killed me around 50 seconds after i logged in i never really stood the chance i should have probably logged out but then again things happen way too fast and i'm not sure if i could have prevented his death regardless these are the stats I managed last night and I used all the tips I have shared here with you. They do work and you need to be very, very thoughtful about your steps. Otherwise, you will die a lot and you won't be able to last long. In my opinion, a strategy is key and you need to adapt a lot as well. So there is no fixed guide or strategy to survive, but if you use these tips, I'm pretty sure you will improve over time. And each time you try, you will be able to survive longer. Anyway, that's going to be everything for today's guide. I really hope the content I have delivered here will help you in any way. If so, do let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It really means the world to me. Besides that, well, 
I will see you in the next video. I am Marta Branco. Thank you so much for watching and see you. Bye bye.